this was going to happen. They've always, they continually do math to try to predict when the bits are going to get messed up, when they're going to flip. And this gets beyond what the ECC data can recover from. When the ECC data is reading this, if there are too many flip bits, it will not be able to read this at all, and you'll eventually get a drive that just can't read anything. It'll just completely mess up everything that's happening. So this is the new drives, like that new 750 gig Seagate that just came out. They just switched over to a perpendicular recording mechanism, which instead of writing them long, it writes them up and down so that you can read the data and have more density in a smaller amount of area. Their goal is to make it so that your drive can spin faster, the head can read faster, and that your data is still intact, whatever the, the way that they're going to do it affects the drive. So they've switched a number of times to different mechanisms, and they use glass platters. Some of the drives use glass platters, and some of the drives use aluminum. And so they're trying to basically make them lighter and thinner so they can spin faster, and then they increase the density and also go to this uh, perpendicular recording mechanism, and that's how we get a drive that has a single platter or, or just two platters at this point in time. Uh, that's typically the maximum. I've seen a few drives that have three platters, like a Western Digital Drive and things like that. But the platters of the old days where we would have eight platters or nine platters in a drive, that's being removed, and we're basically getting down to a smaller subset of those drives so that we can try to increase the density and write that data to those drives and get more data on one physical drive. This is a new thing that basically just got uh, patented by Seagate and their idea is to use heat assisted magnetic recording, they call it hammer. And this is a little bit scary to me because as densities increase and I'm trying to do data recoveries, it could be a really big problem, but now they're trying to introduce this idea that the head is now flying too far away from the platter. If we want to read the data better, we need to get the head closer to the platter. So they're introducing an idea that we're going to move the head closer to the platter, but now we've got problems with evaporation of lubrication and things like that. So we're going to try to make it a, a tougher material, and we're going to heat it up so that we can change that bit and write back and forth to that bit. And so that's why you see that they've got a laser here on the end, and they're basically zapping the area, heating it up, writing the data to it. It's evaporating the lubrication that's on it which they call nanotubes, so this really is a series of tubes. The, uh, the nanotubes are the lubrication that's going to fit between this layer and keep that head from touching the platter and doing those things. But, uh, but that seems really scary to me. I don't know if you guys are scared by it, because just from the fact of, yes, it might increase your density, and they think they can go 10 times the density. Now, they haven't said if they plan to use this in the perpendicular recording mechanisms items as well, so I think we're going to get a mixture of things, but you know, if you could go to you know, uh, two terabyte, three terabyte pretty quickly. I, I think most of you would buy it, but we may end up two or three years down the road with some mechanism that is faulty and doesn't hold up to time. So this is the basics of how the operating system reads and writes files. Now, if you're trying to do a data recovery, this is pretty violent. So if you've got a sector, or if you've got something that's wrong with the drive and it's scratched or whatever, and you and the head is moving over that platter that fast, there's a really good chance that you're going to hit a bad spot and you're going to try to, to, it'll actually damage the head and you won't be able to read that data at all. So the ideal method of trying to do a recovery is to do a bitstream type image where you actually read the data from one end of the platter to the other end of the platter as smoothly as possible. And there's some advantages to that. One of the advantages is, is that typically you'll know where it fails and you'll get whatever data you read up to the point that it fails. So if you have some software that you're trying to do, and, and what I mean by this is things like uh, DD, DD Rescue, and imaging programs, forensic imaging programs, those types of applications will try to read the bitstream sectors rather than the OS. They're not looking at the files, and they're not looking at how things are physically on the platters. They're reading it from beginning to end and trying to image it. And coincidentally, if you're doing a RAID, you have to do this. There's no other option. There is no OS. You got one bad, you know, one bad drive in a set of drives. You're going to have to image that drive, and you'll probably have to image the rest of the drives that you have that are good to try to reassemble them into some manner with software or whatever else that you can do. And there are pieces of software that can reassemble RAID and try to guess things and work things out. And, and as you can see, for the most part, I'm trying to address the physical problems of a drive regardless of the OS. 
So it doesn't matter for the most part what OS you're using. If you're imaging a drive and you're doing a, a DD, it doesn't matter if you're using Windows to read a Linux drive or using Linux to read a Mac drive, things like that. So you're trying to narrow down what your scope is going to be so that it doesn't matter what kind of errors and what kind of things that you can have going on. And most of the, the recovery programs that are out there try to read a drive as if the OS mounted it. So that's kind of a bad story when you're looking at how the, most of the recovery software works because if it's scanning the drive and it's moving around with the files or it's you know trying to skip around on the platters, it may be causing more damage and you may use up the one or two good times that you have left to try to get this data back. And most of the time, that's, that's a pretty big deal because I will tell you that on a damaged drive, it really matters that first time or that second time. There's people who keep trying, you know, they'll plug it in and one day it works, the next day they plug it in and it doesn't work and so on and so on. You're using up your last few chances to try to get that data back. So once you know that a drive is done, you need to be prepared to try to copy those files off in the easiest fashion that you can. So I'm going to go into some of the basics of trying to actually do the data recovery and resemble a drive when there's a problem. In the years that I've been doing this, the numbers have pretty much worked out like this. 85% of the problems, at least for that first round, even if it's a physical problem, a lot of times you can read it with software. And you may need to practice with some software, look at some software. Um, on the website, the myharddrivedive.com, there is a list of some things that I've tried and worked on. There's free stuff, there's for pay stuff, there's some discount stuff there. Um, most of the time, things like DD Rescue and things like that are going to be your first defense to try to go and get that image of that and get something off of it. The, uh, the other thing is too is that you might want to play with some software that when you know what the sector is that's bad, some of the software can actually let you skip those sectors. So you can pretty much say, I want an image from this sector to that sector and then stop it and get that image and then start at the next sector and if the head can move past that, then you can read from there to the end of the drive. And then you can use carving software and forensic software. And you know, a lot of times, people kind of skip forensic software when they're doing a data recovery. And that's kind of a bad idea, because there's some good stuff out there that's free. There's good stuff out there. And there's a lot that's for pay. But I mean, in case and things like that get up until like $3,000 to do a data recovery. But you don't need that stuff 99% of the time to actually just get your data back in some sound manner so that you can recover the files. So this 15% of hardware. This is the breakdown of what I'm looking at for 15%. It's the electronics is the biggest one. The board that I brought up at the beginning where the board fails, you'll get a clicking noise. Sometimes the clicking noise can be two things. It can actually be physical head damage, you know, can't read it off the platter. And then the rest of the time, it ends up being a board. A board got fried. Static electricity is really bad around hard drives. Most hard drives are fairly durable. People plug them in, unplug them. They don't use static guards as much as they should, things like that. But that is the biggest killer and kills that board right away. So typically, if you haven't had any signs that your drive is dying and you moved it from one system to another, that's typically what happened is you got some static electricity and chopped that board and it died. And it seems to me, and I'm not going to pick on any particular manufacturer, but my numbers so far seem to indicate that Western Digitals get fried more often from static electricity than they do by physical damage otherwise. Other drives, when I actually get them in for recovery, they seem the board seems to be fairly resilient, but you know they actually have a physical problem or some damage or something along that line. So just be a little bit more cautious. Use your anti-static anti stuff and do what you need to do. But already, just because I just told you, 85% you can do that first pass with software, and 10% you just got to hunt down this board. You've got a 95% chance now of getting back your data without having some physical problem or you know, doing it some other way or shipping it off. So 